I see somebody's joined. Hey, Yoshana, love you, sweet girl. <coughs> I see somebody's joined. Hey, Yoshana, love you, sweet girl. That would be your delayed broadcast. It sure would be. It sure would be. Hello, hello. Love you too, sweetie. Hey, Marianne. I love y'all. It's like a little smile every time I see their faces. I mean, their names come oh. up. I don't see their faces, but their names. I smile. Love you guys. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. It looks like we are about to have more rain. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, can you? Oh, do you have Aaron's? You don't have Aaron's email. I'd have to back. But I could do that. If you can share her the link to her. Because yeah, it's the only way she can get it. Aaron does not mm -hmm. have. Hey, Wanda. Love you. Aaron does not have. Um. Facebook, so the only way she can see it is if we email her the link to it. Oh, it's good to see you, Pramelia. I love you. We're good. Um, it has rained. This has probably been the wet, wettest summer in my memory. I mean, it has rained so much. Um, and we, we just, it's just poured. We have a a swimming pool at the end of the house, an above ground pool for the kids. And Paul has fought that thing tooth and toenail trying to keep it from turning green this year. And I think we've kind of gotten to the point now where we're just... We refer to it now as the frog pond. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it's the ridiculous. boys love it. They can, yeah, frog uh, eggs. Granny, there's more frog eggs out it's there. A, it's like um, pouring money into a big round circle because yep. you throw shock in there and if you do it every time it rains you've done it every other day <coughs> yeah five dollars a hit yeah ridiculous amount of money the only thing still growing in our garden is peppers we're having lots of banana peppers everything else <coughs> died from virus <coughs> except for the okra and the deer have pretty much finished off the okra i don't know why the deer on our property love okra so much they just must be southern deer i don't know they're not they're not northern deer because i don't know if northern deer would know what to do with okra but boy they strip ours they strip leaves and all it's just like sticks pointing up but yes it is very green the the beautiful beautiful um lushness of everything the forest and all and we have trees out in front of our property and all around us, really, and it's just wonderful. Oh, Pramilia, uh, Michelle, have surgery on the 13th and 16th to remove tumors. Yes, I'm going to write that down. <clears throat> Thank you for letting us know, Pramilia. And um, our little Hezekiah, next Monday, will go in to have his little cleft lip repaired. Um, he has the most minimal form of cleft lip there is. The palate's not involved. I mean, it's just literally a little dimple. And the doctor said he didn't think it would take more than an hour to go in there and do it. Although he did tell Aaron when he gets it done, if he doesn't like it, he'll go ahead and redo it. <laughs> He's a really good doctor from Children's Hospital in <clears throat> Birmingham and, um, so, by next Tuesday, it'll all be over and he'll be home. And so, we probably will not have Bible study next Tuesday because we will have a house full of Robinson babies to take care of. But, um, y'all keep him in prayer next Monday. He's got to go on Thursday to have a COVID test. They've got to have a COVID test before he can go into his surgery. But, there's no COVID, so... Um, that's not really a concern. Um, and if you, uh, if any of y'all have prayer needs, even if I don't see them during ladies Bible study, if you go ahead and put them on here, we always go back and read all the comments. So <clears throat> did I miss anything? No, for me, it said she would be keeping 
Hezekiah in prayers. Thank you. This is a big birthday week for our family. Last week was Isaiah and me, our uh, future grandson-in-law, Dalton, Trey, our grandson, our son, Jacob, and Polly, our little Polly, all birthdays in the last 10 days. And Angie's was last Tuesday. Yeah, I said that. I did. And it was a humdinger. It was a humdinger. It was a humdinger. Wonderful. <clears throat> Can I open us in prayer? Yes, sir. Father, I just thank you for this time of fellowship and Bible study. I ask your anointing on Angie that you would give her understanding of the word. Let your word go forth and accomplish that which you please and not return void. And we just thank you again for your son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name I pray. Amen. Amen. I was really blessed. Oh, <coughs> wait. <coughs> Wanda said she was having a biopsy Thursday to see what's going on with her thyroid. Got it, Wanda. You got your wrist. So, yes. And again, y'all post those and we'll read them afterwards. Oh, thank you, Kim. That's very sweet of you. You know, we're blessed. We are. And I don't say that with pride because Lord knows we know we don't deserve it. But God is so merciful mm -hmm. and good to us. We know what we deserve. We know what we deserve. But through his mercy, he has blessed us. And, and we are so thankful. Mm -hmm. Somebody posted the other day. And I know I've seen it many times. It said, if if tomorrow morning you woke up and all that you had was what you had been thankful for the day before, hmm. what would you have? And I thought, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I mean, I spend a huge chunk of my day thanking the Lord. And I, I'm not... I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I, when I go in there and wash my hands, when I'm doing some cleaning, I'll wash my hands, and I'm just so thankful for hot water. Mm -hmm. There was a time when we uh, were trying to really cut down on shopping, and um, I had stopped buying dish soap, and I was just buying octagon, bars of octagon soap. I don't know if y'all remember the day <clears> when... That's what you used to wash your dishes. You just grated a little octagon soap in the hot water, and it, it works very well. But at that time in our, our life, we were just using the octagon soap, trying to just get back to basics as much as possible. And, and oh, how thankful I was that there were options if the day ever came when you couldn't buy dish soap. And y'all know in the last year, there was a lot of things that were not on the grocery store shelves. And thankfully, we didn't really miss them because... We knew what to use in place of those things, and we we were really doing okay, which freed our time to pray for those who weren't. But anyway, be thankful because God is good. No matter what we do, God is always good. Amen. Now, today we are doing um, the last part of our look at jewelry. And the wearing of jewelry, and I will preface this once again. If you wear jewelry, we still love you. God still loves you. You are not bound for hell just because you put on a pair of earrings. We don't believe that. We're not saying that. We are sharing with you our study and why we have chosen to no longer wear jewelry. No and, wedding rings. And, and a lot of people see the title of the message and they balk and they automatically throw up a guard and say, I'm not giving up my whatever. That to me is a sign that you really should give it up. <laughs> True. I mean, if you just listen to her studies, she's just giving you the scripture. She's giving you maybe uh, church history, how the early church fathers felt about it, how the early church addressed it. And then she always leaves it. Read it, let the Holy Spirit convict you, and um, we invariably get bashed and attacked because somebody says, well, you're, you're being judgmental. I'm, I'm sorry. That would be like me hearing that you're sick and reading WebMD's symptoms of certain things and saying, you know, you might want to get that checked out. Yeah. And you say, well, you're judgmental. You're not even a doctor. No, but I play one in real life. 
You know, I don't have time to be judgmental. I got it. I got it. I don't have time for that. I got enough stuff to deal right. with without trying to fix everybody else's life. And I know several of you ladies personally, and I know that you do wear jewelry, and I'm not going to attack you for that. Nope. But she blows me away at the scripture she finds on these subjects. Uh, I mentioned today that she she still has page after page of things and the relevance. So let's get into the study. We're, we're 15 the minutes in. The study, yes, for me, I remember Octian. I was sad that they quit making it. You know what? Unless they've stopped <clears throat> making it in the last six to eight months, we can still get it up here at our Piggly Wiggly, I think. That may be the last time I bought a bar. Um, so we are in Ezekiel chapter 16 today, and I was so blessed. A couple of the ladies that listened to the Bible study messaged me last week with some questions, and I was going to quickly get back with them, but Thursday, no, Wednesday, um, I had grandbaby duty until yesterday. Um, they're repairing and replacing the floors in Haley and Sam's house. And so they had to kind of evacuate the house. <laughs> and uh, if you can imagine replacing floors in a house with, with four little ones and a baby, that just doesn't work. So anyway, they were here with us um, until yesterday. They finally got the floor done. And, oh, it's just beautiful. So glad that's done. But um, so I have not had a whole lot of time to get back on and really write out things. So hopefully I'll cover that today. Um, and I, I'm going to fin finish this Bible study with a question for y'all as far as where we go next. But if you've read Ezekiel chapter 16, it's really, really good. And notice in verse 2, it says, Son of man, calls Jerusalem to know her abominations. Verse 3, And say, Thus saith the Lord God unto Jerusalem. This passage was not directed at an individual. This passage was directed at a city, God's city. I think that's important to note. I believe that all scripture is given for inspiration, for exhortation, for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. All of it is Old Testament, New Testament. That being said, we still need to pay attention to what the, the purpose of the scripture was. And this was addressing Jerusalem. He goes down through there. We read all of that last week, so I don't want to go back over it. But we stopped at verse 10. Um, so let's read verse 10, and then I'm going to go back over these that I shared last week. Verse 10 says, I clothed thee also with broidered work and shod thee with badger skins, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. Now, I went through and gave four verses, and I stopped it for because of time. There are myriad verses that will go right along with this, and what I'm wanting to show you is what I believe the Lord showed me. There's a meaning to everything in the Word. There's actually, there's, I believe, multiple meanings. Depending on your moment in life, He can just reveal a whole different facet. You know, I did that study and talked about the facets of God's Word. And you turn it a certain way and there's another color that you see. <coughs> it does not change the heart of the Word of God doesn't change that, but sometimes you're in a place where you see something a little differently. Um, so anyway, we're going to quickly read through these four verses that we went over last week. Oh, uh, next page. Yes, these right here. Let me list those. Isaiah 61.10. Do you want me to type it since I use two fingers? No. Um, Revelation 19.8, Revelation 3.18, and Acts 3, 6. There you go. Okay. Isaiah. 
61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh herself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. Okay, so we are talking about verse <clears throat> 10 in Ezekiel 16. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger skin, and girded thee about with fine linen. I covered thee with silk. So the point being, this is the Lord talking. So if the Lord clothed thee, being Jerusalem, with broidered work and shod Jerusalem with badger skin and girded Jerusalem with fine linen and covered Jerusalem with silk, that must mean that we can wear designer clothing, very fancy, very expensive clothing, and that all of the people of Jerusalem surely were dressed this way. That's one thought. That's one thought. We know because we understand the word of God. We also understand what Jerusalem like was like. Not everybody was clothed in silk and broidered work. Not everyone was shodded. Shod thee means the feet, the shoes, with badger skin. And not everyone wore fine linen. So does that mean that God is lying here because not every citizen of Jerusalem was clothed in this fashion? No, he was bringing out what he had blessed them with. Do we really believe that every citizen of Jerusalem was given by God Almighty in a miraculous act, broidered work, shoes made of badger skin, fine linen to wear, and they were covered in silk. Is that what we believe? That's what some want to believe. It is possible, <clears throat> but I don't read that anywhere in history, that every member of the, the citizenry of Jerusalem was dressed this way, and it was a miraculous act of God. I do know of miraculous acts of God where he had a pillar of fire, by night, a cloud by day, a bush that burned and was never consumed. The firstborn of every family was destroyed in Egypt. Um, there's lots of them, lots of miracles. Mm -hmm. I don't see that this was a miracle. Now, you're welcome to um, disagree, and I would love to hear how you disagree, but we're going to go through each of these items that it says he clothed them with. Because I believe, <coughs> I believe that there was a meaning to each and every one of these. So, Isaiah 61.10. Did you just read that? Mm -hmm. I will greatly rejoice, for he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. Verse 10, I clothed thee with broidered work. Beautiful, beautiful, intricate work. That's what broidered is. It's embroidered. It's made beautiful and, and, and delicate. And here in Isaiah 61 10, have clothed me with garments of salvation. Now, I'm born again. And let me tell you, the Lord has taken careful time with me in clothing me with salvation. He planned it out in detail. If you know how to embroider fabric, you know what I'm talking about. Even if you just do cross stitch, you have to get out a magnifying glass when you get to my age. The needles are delicate. Every stitch may be a different color of thread. It is, it is intensely detailed. Broidered work. The salvation of the children of God is a detailed matter. It is not just some fell swoop and whoop, everybody's got it covered. You see what I mean there? I do. Covered me with robes of righteousness. I covered thee with silk is what it says in verse 10. And if you go back to the Proverbs 31 study that I talked about silk, I'm not going to spend the whole time going over that again, but I encourage you to go back to the Proverbs 31 study where it talked about fine linen and silk and Listen to the study that we did on that. Um, 
Cover me with robes of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. Now let me skip a page or two back here and share with you. The account of the betrothal, well, let me just cut to the chase. The bride price was the price, it's the word is matan or matin or whatever you want to say. This was given by the family of the groom to the bride's family. It was gold, silver jewelry, clothing, and additional gifts for members of her family. Do we not remember in the Word of God, in the New Testament, Jesus gave gifts? The New Testament reference, and I forgot to write it down. Oh, the the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit gifts gave gifts. Spirit. Right. Gifts. Right. Same, same, same analogy word. that oh. the bride, not the same word, but same analogy. The bridegroom being Christ, the Holy Spirit and Christ being one, gave gifts to the bride, the church. You understand? That's the bride price. That was the matan. That was the equivalent of a, a earthly groom giving gifts to the bride and her family. Okay? Now, again, I didn't write those scriptures down, but if you, if you want them, I can get them to you after Bible study. The dowry, which is the word mohar, M-O-H-A-R, was given by the bride's family to the groom. Okay? The groom separates from his, his um, home of birth, essentially, which Jesus did when he left heaven and came to her. But the bride's family gives gifts to the groom for the future home of the bride. And what did the bride's family give? They gave money. The dowry sometimes was money, but it was mostly servants or slaves and gifts that would be used in the new home. Now, as I studied that, and let me tell you, I studied that. Christ gave gifts to his church. Did you find that scripture? I didn't. It's okay. I'll go back and get it. We, what do we as the bride of Christ bring to our groom, Jesus? We, we bring more people with us. We get out. We spread the word. We bring more servants to Christ. We, in, in the secular sense, she might bring a maid or a cook or a, a, a stable boy. If they were slaves, you know, she might bring her slaves with her, but they would be brought to serve the master. As a Christian, our job is to reach out into the world to bring in more people, to give that good news message so that more people can become servants of Jesus Christ, come into the kingdom. That is our dowry. Does that make sense? Y'all comment if I'm getting confusing. So the, the gr groom's gift to the family were the gifts, the, the gold and the, the silver and all of that. Remember what, was it Peter and John, silver and gold? Have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. He gave healing. He gave restoration. He gave new life. He gave the gifts of prophecy and all of those gifts, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, all of those were gifts. Now, if you'd rather have jewelry, okay. Not sure how to respond to that. If the desire of a person's heart is to get jewelry from the Lord and, and a stamp of approval for more jewelry. Okay. I, but if you want righteousness, godliness, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, if you want to have the gifts, do you know what I'm saying here? Does, does that make sense? To me it does. 
There's just so much more and better when we, when we don't seek out earthly treasures. <laughs> to me, that is such a running theme of the entire Word of God. I'm not sure why it's still an issue. Yeah. Okay. That was just a little aside. I think you're looking for 1 Corinthians chapter 12 with the gifts of the Spirit listed. Yes. Well, we can definitely, I will put that up later after Bible study. Let's read Revelation 19, 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Hmm. Again, we went over these last week, but I just wanted to refresh. She should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. What is the fine linen? The righteousness of the saints. And this is the bride of Christ. This is the bride of Christ, which we are. Mm -hmm. We are no longer under the old covenant. We are under the new covenant. We are no longer bound by the laws of the old covenant. We are under the new covenant of Jesus Christ. We gain his righteousness. It becomes our righteousness through his shed blood. Does that make sense? So why would we want to go back to the old covenant where the thing that we seek from God is really nice clothes? I think we need to step up to a higher plane. I think... I think I think, you know, it's like those little birds. You remember that morning, really early in the morning, I kept hearing the little birds. Mm -hmm. And the bluebird mama was sitting out on our deck calling to the babies in the birdhouse. And they'd poke their head out, but they wouldn't actually come out. And they kept poking their head out. And she was sitting there. She was chattering so loud it woke me from a sound sleep. And finally, one by one, those little birds looked out and came out. But... At first, they were comfortable where they were. She was calling them to a higher plane. She was calling them to a, a bigger, a, a, a greater level, but they were cozy where they were. And what she was calling them to was a little bit scary, I'm sure. But then they came out and they rose and they felt the wind under their wings and what a glorious morning that was for all of us. Maybe... Maybe sometimes we want to hold on to the flesh stuff, the secular stuff, the earthly stuff, because we're just a little bit afraid of what that next plane is going to be. But let me tell you, it really is worth it. It's, it's worth it. It's our it. comfort zone. Yeah. We want to stay in our comfort zone, and we want to do what everybody else is doing. All the little birds saw what everybody else was doing. All they could see was... This is all I've ever known. And then when they, their mother called them out, they got out. Then they could fly. They couldn't fly inside that birdhouse. No. They, they was able to understand something by stepping out. They saw a new world that they'd never seen before. And yeah. the blessings were incredible, but it was, <clears throat> it was the known that was more comfortable. <coughs> it was easier to stay with the known. Um... Revelation 3, 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Now, in Revelation chapter 3, honestly, do we feel like he is saying, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire? I mean, Kurt, this is John on the Isle of Patmos. He's been exiled. He is... And I don't know which church he's talking now, to. Now, run on down to that jewelry store because they got better gold. When I was young, Bromberg's Jewelers over in Birmingham was the jewelry store. Maybe it still is. I don't know. But, you know, if you got something from Bromberg's, that was powerful. And he's speaking to the Good church stuff. of Laodicea there. He wasn't telling them to go buy more gold. Well, why not? There's nothing wrong with gold. Gold is not sinful. Why not? Go get you some gold. I think we all agree. 
He's not talking about a new gold ring or some hoops or little nose ring stuck in your nose. He's talking about the gold tried by fire, which is the power of God. Go after that. Revelation, no. Oh, I say, I but anoint thine eyes with I salve so thou mayest see. It is a poultice, a plaster. It's not cosmetics. I actually heard somebody say one time, he said to put on eye, you know, eye makeup. I said, it says salve. Yeah, but it means eye makeup. It does make your eye, you know, eye makeup makes your eyes brighter. You look all washed out without it. I guess God didn't understand that. Never heard that part before. God does not understand that we have tiny little eyelashes and ours don't, our eyes don't pop. We need something to make our eyes pop. God didn't get that. God didn't get that. I'm not mocking. I'm being extremely serious. I was that person. Oh, I cannot go out like this. I've got to put on a little bit of eyeliner or mascara or something. My eyes just fade away. Acts 3, 6. If gold and silver were good, why did these two men have none? Then Peter no, said... No, that was, that was my side. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. I thought that didn't sound like scripture to me. Yeah. Then Acts 3, 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The point being, if... if the jewelry, the silver, the gold, the diamonds is all desirable. And in fact, it's a good thing for God's people to show prosperity. Why didn't Peter and John have any? Why didn't they have any silver and gold? These are the servants of the Almighty God. These are the apostles, the big guys. That goes against all the teaching of the televangelists now that say that you're supposed to be prosperous if you're a Christian. Jesus didn't have a house to dwell in. Didn't even have a pillow to lay his head on, if no, I remember. No, he was homeless, and the apostles didn't have silver and gold, so. And, you know, I've heard so many folks talk about how this is just common <clears throat> amongst the people of the day. Can you picture... Mary, the mother of Jesus, with a stud in her nose. Now, I will say, though, back then, the common folk did put stuff in their nose. They pierced stuff, even though Scripture clearly tells it. Now, I'm not saying the, the church. I'm just saying the common folk. So why didn't Mary, the mother of Jesus, think, well, that doesn't make me look cute. I don't get that on a lot of levels. But... Um, I mean, I just, to me, this is common sense. But, verse 11 of Ezekiel 16. <clears throat> I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. Ah, uh, this is God. This is God talking to the people of Jerusalem. He decked them with ornaments. He put bracelets upon their hands, and chains on their necks. Well, there you go. Let's do that. Proverbs 1, 8 through 9. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. What shall be an ornament and a chain? The instruction of thy father and the law of thy mother. An ornament of grace. Chains. This is the beauty of a child of God. Not, not neck chains. <clears throat> you know, when we were first making our changes and I was really questioning God because I had some beautiful pieces of jewelry. I loved to wear pearls. Pearls was my favorite thing to wear. And then I had gold and, oh, I had all of it. But one day I was getting ready for church. And I was in front of my mirror, which is what you're supposed to do getting ready for church. You're supposed to make your 
physical appearance, perfect. Put on my makeup, had the hot rollers, curled my hair, had my hairspray ready, all of it, put my earrings in, and I was putting a necklace on my neck. And as I put that necklace on my neck, it had a pendant on it, and I clasped it, and I was looking, I was straightening my dress and looking at my pendant, and that pendant came down in a V because of, I mean, that necklace came down in a V and that pendant hung right there. And I stood there looking at myself in the mirror, evaluating, did I look okay to go to church? Did I look okay to go to church? Wow, what a statement. And I noticed that pendant hung right there, ladies, right here. There was no way for a person to see the pendant without putting their eyes right here. And suddenly, I was overwhelmed. Overwhelmed with pain, just pain in my heart because it dawned on me that beautiful pendant was to ornament my flesh and it was drawing everyone's eye right here. Maybe you're not seeing what I'm saying, but I'm gonna tell you what, a Holy Ghost moment I had never seen it before, never thought about it, never crossed my mind. But that day, the Holy Spirit says, what do you want them to look at? Where will they cast your eyes? And then suddenly, I was aware of all the things. Now, I didn't give up my jewelry that day. I didn't give up my makeup. I was still in the process. It took me a long time and a lot of study. It did not come easy. And here's, here's the amazing thing. I didn't have anybody telling me this. Nobody in our realm of connection was playing. Everybody was just like us. Anybody I mentioned it to, wow, that, you're, just, you're just getting stuck on stuff. That's not important. God doesn't care about that stuff. Legalism. Legalism. Actually, they didn't say legalism at first. They were just trying to save us from this bondage we were about to get into. <laughs> Honey, do you just, that's not important. Yes, it is important. Ugh. Verse 12. And I put a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thine ears and a beautiful crown upon thine head. Once again, that settles it. God put jewel. Now, I have to ask, how did God put a jewel on the forehead of Jerusalem? Think about that. He's talking to Jerusalem. And if you want to go so far as to say he's talking to the people of Jerusalem, where exactly is the forehead of Jerusalem? He didn't say, my people, my children. He said, Jerusalem, the beloved city. Is he talking about a little dot to go on the forehead like they do in India? Earrings. I don't know if I ever show y'all. I have earring holes, scars in my ears from years of wearing earrings. And I did not. That's true. Thank you, Lord. And a beautiful crown upon thy head. Is that what we want? Is that what we're after? The crown on your head, earrings in our ears, jewels on our forehead. Psalms 96, 9. I worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, fear before him all the earth. The beauty of holiness. He is laying the groundwork in the Old Testament leading to the New Testament. The groundwork is being laid about what beauty is. When he says, I have put a jewel in your forehead, he's not saying that he plastered some sapphire 
or wants you to plaster some sapphire to your head. Think about the, the break apart this thing. And I know some of you have probably sat under teaching where somebody just explained it all away just like I'm doing. Maybe you've heard every bit of this before. But I'm going to tell you something. The last days, there's going to be a refiner's fire that's cut up full blast. And what is not of God is going to fall away from the church. Evil will prevail in most lives. But in the church, all that flesh is going to be cut away. <clears throat> I believe that. The beauty that we need to be seeking is not this exterior. It's the beauty of holiness and here, here's the flip side of that coin. You're going to be hated for it. Really, you know, people in the world truly cannot grasp that we would intentionally walk towards something that is going to hurt our flesh and we're going to be hated for. They don't like it. It sets a standard for them that they don't want. First Chronicles 16.29. Where am I at? Give unto the Lord the glory due in, unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The beauty of holiness. Here it is repeated. That is what is beautiful. Holiness. Not hoop earrings or diamond studs. Psalms 29.2. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The beauty <coughs> of holiness. Does this not go exactly along with what the word says in the New Testament? Not outward adorning. And remember, any, any Bible that puts the word merely outward adorning, is in danger of hellfire because they've added a word to the holy word of God that was not there. That word merely is not there in the original scriptures. Second Chronicles 20, 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. The beauty of holiness. Seems we to have be a, a theme. <laughs> there, and again, I can keep adding to that, but there's four scriptures right there that talk about what is beauty. It is not emeralds, diamonds. Those are building materials in heaven, in the new Jerusalem. Gold is the asphalt of the streets. There's no value to it. When, if the system shuts down, if the <clears throat> economy goes haywire, if a pandemic shuts you in your house for months, you cannot eat a diamond. Well, you could, but it'll just pass right it's, through it's you. It's useless for almost everything else. In for the world. everything except receiving glory from others. And the reason I wanted to show verse Proverbs 29, 2, give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Anything that we do for our physical brings glory to our name. <gasps> Did you see that diamond she was wearing? Oh, that was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Has anybody ever walked up to another person and seen jewelry dripping off of them and just bowed down and said, Glory to God, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus? No. Well, sweetheart, you just, look at you. You're just all sparkles. Look at you. Oh, your jewelry's just beautiful. I have yet in 58 years of life seen anybody drop to their knees in worship of the Lord because of a diamond. Well, people were swayed by someone's appearance. These, uh, as I mentioned before, the televangelists, all these TV preachers, they have a gold thing in the background. They have gold thrones that they sit on. They have a, an entire stage set up to draw your eye to how magnificent they are. 
and to show I must be a man of God or a woman of God or I wouldn't have all this behind me. You know, I mean, I'm yes. not, I'm not trying to say that we have the perfect setup here, our living rooms in the background. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying we that don't. people, I mean, someone who is wanting to make you think that they're a prosperous salesperson, a realtor or whatever, a car salesman, they're going to dress up fancy. A banker you go in, they're going to dress up fancy to impress you, to make you think that they're somebody that they're not. And as you was reading this earlier, the stage. I may be stepping in ahead of time. Setting the stage. But I was thinking, how many of us have seen the Mona Lisa? I mean, we have all seen the painting, the Mona Lisa, and we all know it. We can close our eyes and see it in the head. Now think about this. Can you visualize the frame around the Mona Lisa? Because that's what you're doing when you adorn yourself with outward adornment is you're getting someone's attention. She saw, talked about someone, oh, that wasn't that diamond magnificent. Did, did you see so-and-so's necklace or her earrings? That's the, that's the framework around. Mm -hmm. You are drawing attention to an add-on and not the work of art, the masterpiece itself that God has made. Absolutely. Absolutely. <coughs> Have you got your Bible open to Ezekiel? I do. I want to check something really quick. Do it. Hang on, ladies. Ezekiel chapter 16 is a long one. It is. Okay. Um, let's look at <coughs> verse 13. <coughs> Excuse me. Thus wast thou decked with gold and silver and thy raiment, was a fine linen and silk embroidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil, and thou wast exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. The Lord gave amazing things to his people. He blessed them. He set them in a good place. He honored them in the earth. He cleared the path sometimes, and sometimes he let them fight their way through. He gave them amazing gifts. That's what this passage is about. It's not about physical jewelry. Many of them had physical jewelry. I am certain of that. Many of them wore earrings and changes of garments and, and tiaras on their head and jewels all dripping. Some of them dripping with jewels and the finest clothing. But have you ever read what happens to these people? Have you ever like read it? You know, it's one thing to read the Bible as a as a story or to study sections of the Bible for information. But when you just start at the beginning and you just read through the Old Testament, I remember when my daddy got saved. It was 11 months before he died. But my mother gave him I think she gave him a New Living Translation because it was like really easy to read. And he loved to read. So he read that Bible as, as a novel. He read it as a history book. And when he got to the end of it, he said, those people just couldn't get it right. They'd, every time they'd get out of that mess, they'd just go right back into it. They were learning steps but they never they never got it they never understood and that has stayed with me all of my life he died when i was 13 but that understanding has stayed with me all of my life and i remember the scripture coming what is it constantly learning and never coming to the knowledge of the mm -hmm. truth over and over it is made clear over and over what the lord desires of us but we keep falling back on these human, flesh, sin nature ideas. We were bought with a price and we were redeemed. We're no longer slaves to sin, but we just keep running back there. 
We just keep running back to Egypt. And you just wonder at some point, when is going to be the breakthrough? When do we leave it behind and stop making excuses to slip back in the old way? We all know people that are drug addicts. They'll go to rehab. They'll get all pumped up and all ready to go, and they go out the door, and bam, they're right back into the mess again. And then some disaster occurs, and they're shipped back to rehab, and they go through it all again. And, you know, over time, people who really aren't delivered from drugs, they become masters of deceit and manipulation. They become masters of finding the right words to say to convince everyone that they've changed just long enough to get out. I have a brother who has been in prison all of his adult life. I, when I say all, I mean like he might get six months, he might get a year out before he's put back in there. He has spent his life in prisons. But he has become a master of telling you what you want to hear. He knows the terminology. And we all do that to some degree. We all know how to convince ourselves that what we're doing in error of the word is okay. Because God understands. And when we look at things like outward appearance, well, I can tell you right now, I can list the statements and the phrases that are given as that this doesn't matter. But anyone who has seen someone literally dying or hungry or so depressed that they don't even want to open their eyes, I'm not going to cry. It's not 20 minutes yet. Private joke, y'all. But when you've seen that kind of suffering, it really makes you realize how much this stuff has no bearing. But the beauty of holiness holds through all of that. The beauty of holiness, the giving of your entire life to the glory of God every little aspect of it. Don't hunt for a loophole so that you can feed your flesh and make yourself feel better. If you, if you, if we aren't feeling good about ourselves, there's one way to fix that. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his glorious face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory, not mine. His glory. Job 40.10 Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency and array thyself with glory and beauty. Is he telling you to go get your face fixed up and put your makeup on and get your hair done? And Is that the glory and beauty? The beauty of holiness is what he wants. The beauty of holiness. I am not holy. I have not attained. I am like little Christian who is struggling up the hill of despair. The name of that book is Pilgrim's, Pilgrim's Progress. If you haven't read Pilgrim's Progress, please go get that book and read it. It's it the the regular version is tedious to read, but go get a child's version. It's stunning. The revelation in that book, it's an allegory, but I'm telling you, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit because it shows you that walk, it shows you that no divergence from the king's path is okay. You can't 
shift over here and feed your flesh a little bit over here, and then when crisis strikes, you can just jump back in. It doesn't work that way. When we become born again, the old you has to die. But it's not a bad thing. You're not giving up anything. You're gaining everything. We're running short on time. But did you want to use the, uh, I don't even know where the book is now, the Martyr's oh, Mirror. Oh, the Martyr's Mirror. And, uh, yes. These, well, let me do, there's, there's a few more verses right okay. here. Let me just do this. Those whom God takes into covenant with himself are fed with the bread of life, clothed with the robe of righteousness, adorned with the graces and comforts of the Spirit. All of those things, all of those earthly, fleshly things become so unimportant. And let me say, if somebody says to me, Oh, well, you know, I just I just wear that stuff. It really doesn't matter to me. If it doesn't matter to you, why wear it? I'm not going to sit here and go through all of the pagan reasons why jewelry came into being. The first known jewelry was in Ur of the Chaldees where God took Abram and Lot out because it had become so pagan. And Sarai, his wife, that's where the first jewelry was. Amulets, brooches, all of those things were created to bear the pagan gods. I could go into that forever, but it won't bring about a heart change. The heart change has to come when we recognize what is beauty to the Lord. Beauty to the Lord. Matthew 23, 27. We're going to read these very quickly. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Mark seven eighteen. And he saith unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from within, without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him? Wow. If it's outside, it doesn't, it can't make you defiled. Interesting. Luke eleven thirty nine. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup of the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Oh, the Pharisees focused on making their outward flesh plain and, and unadorned, and they were wicked inside. Right. It doesn't do any good to be plain, unadorned. You know, I don't think of Charles Manson as being an adorned person. No. He was plain, didn't even cut his hair. Complete evil. So does that mean anybody that is plain is evil? No. But when you put the whole context of what the Word of God is telling us to focus on, it becomes extremely clear. Being plain does not make you godly. Doesn't make you holy. Being fashionable doesn't make you godly. It doesn't make you evil. But where the focus is, does. Who you're trying to give glory to matters. If, if you're... I heard somebody say one time when the rapture comes, if you turn around to look for somebody to see if they're going up, you're not going. If you turn around and grab your rings, you're not going. If anything down here on this earth means more to you than what's up there, you're not going. I, that wasn't me that said that. That was somebody else that said that. But I thought it was interesting. All that we do down here for the flesh is going to burn up or rust or be eaten by worms. Every effort we make, every effort we make for our flesh is wasted. <clears throat> I'm not talking about not trying to be healthy. I'm not talking about taking care of your physical needs, medications and all of that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about whatever we do to bring glory or attention to this flesh is going to burn up or rust or, or be eaten by worms. That's what the scripture tells us. And people are commenting, and I'm not seeing it. 
Um, Isaiah 3, 16. Oh, that's too long. Okay, quickly. Isaiah 3, 16 through 24. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks with, and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and make a tinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab of the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. And this was written to the daughters of Zion. And he denotes daughters, meaning individuals. I went through this passage for a long time, many years ago. I examined every bit of it. I searched it out. I cried. I prayed over it. I said, God, is this about me? I went through the whole thing. There is nothing of this earth that is more important than complete surrender to the will of God. Nothing. Nothing. No opinion. No loved one. No home. Nothing can stand between you and the will of God. Everything must be removed. That's my opinion. Is that your opinion? Yes. I believe the Word of God teaches us that. <clears throat> this, if you've never gotten a martyr's mirror, this is a martyr's mirror. We've mentioned it many times. Can you see the size type? And yet, this book has 1,141 pages with that tiny little type. This is the stories of the lives of people who stood for God even unto death. It's their stories. I asked myself one time if this was being written again, would my life be included? <coughs> would my children be included in this book? I've never been threatened with death if I didn't renounce God. I've never been threatened to have my children taken away. Although now I, that's, you know, that's potentially at the doorstep. Someone said the other day, now I understand how the Jews stood by. I mean, the Germans stood by when the Jews were taken. Hmm. We see it every day. We're, such... we're too superficial. We're, um, and I guarantee you there's not one of those martyrs mentioned in there that is one piece of jewelry mentioned or adornment. One per not one person in that book that it says, and so-and-so was known for his fine dress or he had rings that everybody talked about. There's not one mention of that in there. But what is mentioned in there is their heart and their character and how they walked in holiness and how they made an impression on the, the government of the day or the church, or not the church, but the Jews of the day or the Catholic church, some of them, they never once mentioned anything else about it except their character. 
And that's what they hated. Well, and you know, that's the argument for a lot of folks is, well, I, I love God. And I, I'm not the least bit convicted to not wear jewelry. That's the argument. And that's between each one and God. And we've shared all of this to share why we realize that those things being part of our life is not God's will. That's why we can happily say, we love you whether you wear jewelry or not. We are just presenting the truth that God presented to us. It doesn't have any bearing on whether or not you have value to us or, or anything else. It doesn't. But I told Paul, I said, I've been doing this Bible study. Actually, I think I've done it for four years now. Ladies Bible study. And I have fought doing this series of Bible study-ish points because I just... I just did not feel comfortable doing it because I know a lot of folks highly disagree, but the time came up for me to do that for head covering and, and like I said, I've covered makeup and jewelry now and we've not gotten into actual physical clothing. And I told Pa, I said, I think I'm going to close this now. There's, there's so much more. There's so much more. I, I want to say one more thing because I know you're about to have to close, but there are some who would argue that, well, what about these people in the Old Testament? Most of the time, we pick and choose what we want. They say, well, that, what about these people that did this? In the New Testament, we have clear mandates. Don't let your outward adorning be of gold and jewelry, but let your beauty be the inward holiness. And I will also point out that a lot of times those people will pick and choose in the Old Testament what they want. When you say, it says, a man shall not lie with a man. Well, that's the Old Testament. We're not under the Old Testament. So don't make it convenient for yourself trying to find a loophole. Well, it, we did this in the Old Testament, so I can do it now. But another verse in the Old Testament, you find, if you're not going to live by all the Old Testament, don't live by any of it. But the New Covenant's what we're under. And absolutely, it tells us not to be adorned. So I don't know what the big argument or big big question is, you know? Well, our flesh wants to look pretty. It sure does. P-U-R-D-Y, pretty. <laughs> our flesh wants to be pretty. We've been taught from the day we were born about pretty. People slap those bows on little baby girls' heads. They're bigger than their heads. Got to look pretty. Um, I want to ask one question before we close, and I've gone 10 minutes over. Um, do y'all want me to continue next week, or I can't next week, two weeks from now, on the actual physical clothing um, about modesty and all of that and not showing your body? Is that something y'all are interested in? I mean, I can go into all of that, too, if you want that. But if you'll just say yes please continue on with garments or no, because I'm more than happy to move on to another subject if the majority of the ladies that join us don't want to get into that. So we can or whatever. And those of you who wrote me privately, I hope I've covered um, some of the points y'all had. I probably can never cover all of them, but I hope that I've covered some of those points, and I know I've missed all of your comments Armenia today. Armenia and Marianne say yes, continue. Um, let's see, Yoshana. Look, Yoshana wrote, looking into the faces of those who risk everything just to believe in Jesus, literally risking their lives, their families' lives, whether their families are believers or not, their livelihoods, literally every aspect of their lives in danger. It changes you. Doesn't it show, Yoshana? I mean, right now to realize that it's this very split second that I'm looking and speaking these words, somebody over somewhere is being brutalized because they won't renounce Christ? Doesn't it make all of this so ridiculous? ridiculously unimportant. He just wants us to live obedient. And those people are. They're living obedient. They're not, 
you're not worried about the trappings of adornment. Ugh, ugh. I think it's so telling that when you finally are broken before the Lord and you're weeping, it washes all that mess off. Don't y'all find that interesting? It washes all of it off. It washes your heart clean, but it washes the face clean too. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody posted, oh, I got to stop because YouTube won't let it continue. I love y'all. We won't see you next week. Pray for Hezekiah. And hopefully this Sunday we will have church. We couldn't have church this week because Paul got that mess in his throat and was struggling. You can hear, hear him today still coughing, so. <laughs> we love y'all. We're praying for you. Message me if I didn't cover a question you have, and I will try to answer it private message. And so two weeks from now, Lord willing, we will do uh, just hopefully part, just one part about the actual physical garments and about modesty and an adornment on that. Love you. Bye.